<coughs> right, so I'm here to tell you about Software Radio. It isn't a main part of our research, but it's something I played a little bit with uh, about a summer and a half ago. So I need to tell you what software is and radio is, basically. Um, so software is the thing that you find on your computer. Is this a <laughs> So this is a very simple program, but that's the bit. So if you're running your email program, you don't need to completely change your program when you go to edit your photos or something else. So the software is a bit easy to change. Now this program is very simple. If you went into a computer shop in the 80s, you'd find it running on, uh, on lots of computers. This is a more complicated program. This is actually quite well known. This is a program that's deliberately written to be hard to read. And it's quite uh, fest festive because if you run it, it prints the lyrics to the 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> So the idea of software is kind of flexible. It's like Lego bricks. Once you have them, you can build all kinds of stuff out of them. That's quite easy to do. You can give it to kids, and they build all kinds of creative, state, creative stuff. But if you want to build a new Lego brick, that's a lot of hassle. You have to design it. You have to get somebody who knows how to make plastic to suck it into the right shape. So that's roughly what software is. It's flexible. Now, what's radio? Well, radio is the transmission of information using radio waves or electromagnetic waves. And it can be from huge towers. This is the RTE transmitter in Clarkstown, which is a little bit north of here. Or it can be little handheld devices like little radios like that. So what do you need to know about ele ele uh, electromagnetic waves from this point of view? Well, one is they're something to do with electricity. And the other one is that they have a frequency. So when you tune in FM 104 on your radio, 104 is the frequency that you're looking for. So how does a radio work? Well, you have an area which picks up a very weak electric signal. You need an amplifier to make it stronger. And then all this stuff on the right-hand side of the radio works at a fixed frequency. So what you do is you take the frequency that the signal came in at, and you sort of have to move it. And that's done by a thing called a mixer. And then you need to make it a little bit louder again. You need to get the information back out. That's called demodulation. And finally, you need it to present it to somebody. And so if it's a radio, it's a speaker. If it's a TV, it's a TV screen. If it's a computer, it's made of the data that you have to look at in your web browser. Now, how do you actually build all this stuff? Well, the stuff on the left-hand side turns out to be not so hard to build. So an amplifier is basically a transistor. The mixer is a transistor. The tuning thing, you need a crystal and some other stuff. This stuff over on this side is much harder. You need capacitors, resistors, all kinds of things. So the idea of software already is you get rid of all the hard stuff and you replace it with a computer program. Now, of course, you're going to have to somehow get the signal into uh, the computer. So how do you do that? Well, computers are good at dealing no with numbers, so you need to turn your uh, signal into numbers. So here's a wave. And what we do is we measure it. So these little bars here show we've measured the wave at different times. And then just off the bottom of the screen, there are a series of numbers, which is the, what the computer works on. And that's done by a device called an analog to digital converter, which is sort of standard technology. Now. So why would you bother doing this? Well, in the old days, if you want to design a new form of modulation, which is the way you send the information, you had to design a circuit, you had to fabricate it, you had to discover it wasn't made right, you had to go around again, you had to get somebody to build it again, and then you try it out. Uh, but with software, you can just rewrite the program. In fact, you can even do this at home. So a nice Spanish guy discovered that this is a TV card that you put into your PC uh, for watching TV in your PC. And he discovered this had a really fast analog to digital converter on it, even though it only cost about 80 years. And so you can get the signal in. And then you need to be able to process it. And now uh, to deal with the picking out the right frequency and that kind of thing, you need Fourier analysis. But this is a solved problem in mathematics. This was done 200 odd years ago. And turning that into software is pretty simple. Easy. The other thing you need is an aerial. In my case, what I chose to do is this is my mother's back garden, and I ran a wire down the back garden in it amongst the telephone cable so nobody would complain. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happens if you try this? What kind of interesting things can you get out? So, this is a picture. Time is going along the bottom, and frequency is going up here. So, a horizontal line is a fixed frequency. So, for instance, that line at 252 is RTE Radio 1 on 252 long wave. If you go down a bit, a little bit, you've got BBC Radio 4. And 200 long wave or 199. You can try out things like, you know when you touch a radio and the signal gets better or worse? This is me as an antenna on the right hand side. You can see the signal goes from being not so strong to better. So at these frequencies, I'm a reasonably good antenna. The little fluff around the uh, RTU1 line is actually people speaking. So I tried this uh, in the Hamilton Institute. It didn't work so well. We got this bear, 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 bear. See these bars going up? And they're covering a really wide frequency. And we were going, what the hell is this? It stopped us doing the experiments we wanted. Uh, and in the end, after months of searching, we discovered it's a fire alarm system in the university. It's not very well earthed or something, not very well filtered. And it's, the radio signals from it are leaking out onto the mains and all over the place. So if you wander around the campus and you can't hear BBC Radio 4, which we discovered some people couldn't, that's the reason. So that's software radio. It's radio, you take out the tricky hardware stuff and you replace it with a bit of software. And it is available in your back garden, but not if you live too close to the fire system. <laughs> Thank you.